Bang. the direction we are in Europe <laughs> that, that was good <laughs> that was a good that was a really good one good morning we're in Europe today we decided to make our trip to Europe welcome back to the 80 and 8 this morning we're in the 8th arrondissement of Paris wandering our way above ground into Europe or Europe I don't think I've ever been to this train station before, this metro station, which is kind of exciting. I've always wanted to go to Europe too. I've walked by this metro station like a dozen times, but I've never, never gone inside of it. The Gima? The oh, Gima yeah. metro station. Well, tell us about that. What does that mean? Gima is an artist. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. So he did a lot of Art Nouveau and he's famous for doing the metros here in 19, well, metro in Paris was started in 1900, so around that time. So this is his classic metro design. There's not that many original ones left in Paris. So pretty cool. It is cool. I like these. People are actually really afraid of them when he first made them. Like, really? It's supposed to be a welcoming entrance into the metro. It looks like the gates of hell. <laughs> so some people didn't want to go down in the metro for it because of it, but <laughs> very popular. And then he went out of fashion. They tore some down back into style again. So. And there, here we are. So today we're going to be wandering. I don't personally know a whole lot about this uh, quarter. I do know a few things. I do want to go see St. Augustine, the church, and I would like to end up at uh, Parc Monceau, which is a great park here in the north of Paris. I always thought it was in the 17th, but it's not. It's actually in the 8th. So uh, yeah, and we're right above Gare Saint-Lazare. There's a bridge behind it that I always forget how to get to it. If you've seen the new Mission Impossible, that's the scene where they get ambushed by a sniper. Now I know a quick way of getting there. I always have a hard time remembering how to get there efficiently or quickly. And now I'll never forget. So, where? we're on Rue de Madrid. Oh. Uh, I see. Look, Rue de Madrid, Rue de Vienne. Okay, so all the streets All the are streets are European to... cities. Hey, can I just remind you you promised me breakfast? Oh yeah, let's get you food. Toot to sweet, let's get you food. That cafe does look nice. Where is that? I don't know, but it was the first one that came out with a good looking okay, coffee. Okay, send us a, send us a, how far? Oh, no. Nine minutes by bike. Oh, okay. That's, okay. that's not gonna... Boom, got it. She's working harder than we are. Paul did tell us that this was an area that's famous for its musical instruments. Look at this. Violin shop. Right down the street from Europe. It's amazing. He's making violins? <laughs> So you can take that block of wood and turn it into one of these, I guess. It's like this way, like there's a violin shop here. Yeah. And there's one three shops down. Which one do you pick? Like. How do you know which violin, violin shop is the best? How many shops do you need on the same street? <laughs> I always find that weird how there's areas for the Areas same that thing. you just sell the same thing, yeah. Shouldn't we spread these things out? Uh, what if I want a violin shop in the fourth, you know? We'll see how good her sandwich is, but I can't in uh, clear conscience recommend that place because they were not happy with me filming. And uh, that's an immediate mark against. Never go there. Anyways. Also, it was super overpriced. So, we're going to go, yeah, to St. Augustine. How's your sandwich? I don't want to be in the shop. No. <laughs> favorite thing about Paris? Well, it's maybe not my favorite, but I love how they cover their scaffolding with pictures of what's behind it, yeah. or with attractive. So this is hideous scaffolding, you can see it pointing out at the top, Yeah. but they've covered it with this gorgeous um, picture, I the guess. Pictures of the, of depictions of the exact same of window over and over it. again. And so then you don't notice, and it's perfect for like tourist photos and stuff. Have so you, you but have you noticed that it's the exact same window every time? Yes, well they're not, yeah, there's a budget <laughs> I think I know who's on that horse. Me? Yeah. I think it's Joan of Arc. Who do you think it is? I thought I was going to guess. Oh, there you go. See? We're on the same page. It's a Joan of Arc pose also. It is a very Joan of Arc, yeah, very heroic pose. Want on the back? Sure. Yeah, look, look, nice. look at how clean it is in this, on this portion. And it's just like you can see the line where they stopped cleaning. This is like 
pre-COVID vibes. <laughs> they were they were making progress. Uh, yeah, let's go check out Joan of Arc while you finish your sandwich. Assuming. Uh, you want another bite? Yes, please. Assuming that it's. Uh, we'll see if it actually is Joan of Arc. Where's your mask? I was gonna say, you're done eating, you've got no more excuse. We did see a cop, did you see that cop stop that woman to find her when we left the cafe earlier? Right. Yeah. Be sure, if you are in Paris, be sure to wear your mask. The cops are stopping people and they were kind of aggressive about it, so. If you have like something to drink or eat while you're out and about, or a cigarette. So I've seen people just carrying cigarettes just to get away with it. Um, then you don't have to wear your mask, but as soon as you're done eating, you gotta put it back on. You wanna go inside? Yeah. It looks really nice. I think this is the one that made me think like Game of Thrones as soon as I walked in. I've only been in it once. I'm pretty sure I was in this once before during um, the 20 and 20 when I did the 8th and Ronnie's Mock. I mean, I think that's the only time I've ever been inside. Look at, they, look at how clean it is. They really, it's like sparkling. Total Game of Thrones vibes. Because it, like, it's so dirty inside. Like it just feels. Yeah. How old? How old is it? It's like 1860s. Oh wow! It was built during the restoration of Paris. This is not old compared to a lot of churches in Paris. 1860s. But you wouldn't know when you were no. inside. Yeah, this is a 19th century church. Although the, the honestly, the the lamp posts on the side are kind of a giveaway that it's That's from true. a different generation. But I yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have guessed. These are probably. So the celebration of the advent of electricity. So it's the what makes me think Game of Thrones is the altar. Look at that. Yeah, the grime with the the gold is what kind of gives me the fantasy vibes in here. Oh, there's a second organ. The electric chandelier was original too. That's actually really, that one is really bad. Like, look at the one next to it. I guess, is that Jesus over there? Like, you can still see everything, but then you've got these two that are totally wiped out. Oh no, there's a broken window. You can see through the window in a way you're not intended to. There's absolutely no one in here. This is really cool. From here, I think let's make our way towards the park and we'll see what we discover along the way. We don't really have any guiding principles with this wander. We just have a lot of territory to cover, so. What's that? Happened to the wind. Um. These are more or less our boundaries for today. We started up here by this drop pin, that's where Europe is at, and walked down to the church. And now our goal is to angle back towards um, the park, which maybe we'll zig and zag a little bit to get there. So I think we'll walk over here and then up and over. And we'll see what all we find. Hopefully more space invaders. Yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those domes that I always forget. And uh, what I'm trying to remember right now as I'm looking at it is if it's a steeple or a spire on top, that red uh, is probably the most, I don't think there's any other church that has that. Not in Paris. No, so I think if you if you see that, you know you're looking at St. Augustine. I like that this one's named the Big Houseman Garage, and it's definitely it has it looks nothing like an Osmanian building. You want to go to Alfred Hitchcock's Bakery? You think that's him? We are on Boulevard Osman here. So one of the major streets that runs through here is Boulevard d'Asman, and there he is. I mean, I would know the guy anyway. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen the Baron in person before. There you go. See, we're learning stuff. If only he knew there was a garage named after him just down the street, he'd be so proud. 
And here's a classic uh, traffic jam for you. Still no more invaders. It's funny because I never know how to say his name anymore because in French you don't pronounce the H, so you say Hausman. But, you know, the way that he would pronounce it, I imagine, and the way that Americans would pronounce it would be Hausman. Either way, Hausman is the guy who's famous for creating the massive boulevards, like this one that's named after him. Did he create his own boulevard? I have to look that up. I'm not, I'd imagine that he's the reason that Boulevard Hausman, that's totally fine. Did he make Boulevard Hausman? I imagine he did, whether or not it was named after him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all Hausman. So it's like the style for the architecture, which you tend to associate with a lot of Paris and then all these big long boulevards because Paris was you know a cluster of a lot of old medieval buildings people living on top of each other and it was also a hotbed for rebellion that way which is why a lot of revolutions took place because you could just throw up some couches and block the cops from coming in and then pick a fight so part of the reason for making these big long boulevards is so that the cannon and cavalry could get in there and break things up a little bit more easily so he was kind of a subtle counter-revolutionary in that way Classic Hasmanian style, Jay. Yeah, please Shop tell me the, about it. Please. Shop on the bottom. Yeah. And then if you look at this one, the first floor has a shorter window, right? There's yeah. a lower floor, because usually the shopkeepers live there. Yeah. Then your third floor is your best one, because you're off the street. You don't have to walk up too high. So you get a nice balcony. And fifth floor is also good, get a lot of light. And then your servants live up in the very top there on the sixth. Very well summarized. Actually, you know what? I didn't know that the, the first floor, or second in American, I guess, that the first floor, that's why it was shorter, was because that's where the shopkeepers live. Yeah, it's not as nice a floor. No, that makes sense. Oh, that's where this is. I was wondering where this roundabout was. I knew there, there's a roundabout. This is another random, stupid Mission Impossible reference. Sorry, but this there's- This not look interesting. No, but there's a round, I was like, where is, where is there a roundabout where there's nothing in the middle? I didn't know where that was, and now we found it. See, it's a good thing that I watched Mission Impossible recently, just so that I could answer all my own mysterious questions. So what all can we see from here? Oh, that fancy fence marks the boundary. There's some there's some uh, apartments right before Park Monceau, so we're not far. Look at this, and look at, look at this fancy house on the corner. This is great. How often do you get to stand in the middle of a roundabout like this? You're at the center of the world, Jess. I feel pretty good about it, actually. Yeah, feel good, look good. Good combination. This is very nice. Yeah. What's that gate? That gate is uh, the gate that'll take us to Park Monceau. I used to work around here. I just oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I've got a feeling it was through that gate. Really? Yeah. That's nice. One of the other tidbits that just dropped is how with Osmanian reconstruction, the idea was to give you something nice to look at the end of these boulevards. And that's why they built that church down there was to give you something nice to look at. That's what you said? Yeah. She's so smart. So the one restaurant that I do have in my guide is this one, the Balois. I, don't, I just had a good meal there once and I don't have any real recommendations in this neighborhood. So that was the one that I ended up recommending. It's good. I went there with my buddy Ruben, if you remember Ruben, photographer friend from the Netherlands. He had the duck. It was tasty. I'm finding it pretty funny that I'm, that I'm with you in this pool. Because yeah. This was the one area that I said to you. Remember, you were like, I'm yeah. gonna wander around. And I was like, cool. I just don't really want to go the eight. <laughs> <laughs> and here you are. happens in this park they were just filming a movie here last uh like six months or i guess a year ago now what did was there something specific you were looking for there what does happen in this park jess tell us about it oh, I don't know. oh okay <laughs> this park is good for running and for picnicking it's it's surprisingly big for the neighborhood it and is big. the water features are what makes it really great so we'll go over there and check out the pond because if you come to park monceau there's a couple really nice structures here probably osmanian since everything's osmanian over here but it's really beautiful it feels like they made it feel like you're kind of in the old ruins of an ancient civilization which is is what a lot of the turn of the century, I think like the 19th, late 19th century parks, like Bouchemont? Bouchemont, that's what I was thinking of. The ones that they all kind of created. What do you do when I'm not here? I don't. <laughs> I make garbage videos. But Bouchemont is the same kind of thing where they, they built it to look a lot older and more like, I don't know, historyed than it really was, and it, which makes it feel really cool to be in now. And I feel like Parc Monceau must have been done in the same style and same time, which we could look up. But I feel like it has a very similar vibe to it, just a little bit ritzier with like the carousel and everything. And also, I don't think that this was a dumping ground like Bouchemont was. Well, a lot of Bouchemont was quarry. They yeah. dug out the plaster of Paris from Bouchemont. But then they also like used it to dump a bunch of really toxic stuff after the fact, right? They and then they had to clean it all up. But we prefer to talk about it as the place. That I prefer to talk about it as disgusting as it really was. It's a really nice spot. If you don't have like random dudes arguing on top of it.
Kind of what? It's a bit silly. It is a bit silly, but it's like an enjoyable kind of silly. I still enjoy coming here, but yeah, once you notice that, you, then you start noticing how everything's like very particularly placed. It does kind of change the vibe a wee bit. But there are public toilets here, which is where we're gonna head next, and that's actually kind of a hot tip. Because one of the hard parts about walking around Paris is finding toilets. What's this museum? What's that? What's that museum? Uh, the museum. You wanna go check it out first? Okay, let's go see what it is, and, and then we can go to the toilets. Oh, if, I mean, if, yeah, if they've got toilets available, let's do it. But that's what I was going to say, like, finding finding toilets in Paris is, like, one of... So you have friends that have a sixth sense for it, and otherwise you're on your own. And Are you good at finding toilets? Uh, I, I feel just, like you would be. I just walk into wherever I want. That, that's okay, fair enough. <laughs> you just do it with confidence. That's like, true. I'm already eating here, and you just pop into their bathroom. That's also true. Or it you works. buy a Euro cafe. That is your oh. backup plan if they call you out on it. So, oh, here we go. Oh, it's an Asian arts museum. This Interesting. It's kind of museum that should be free, but it's probably not. Oh, it's part of Paris Museum. Yeah, so it, it, theoretically it's going to be free admission. There we go. Yeah, let's do it. And we can check it out. Yeah, sorry. We'll go in there and look at the art. That's what I meant. <laughs> so here's a surprise. It's a great last stop. Those guys don't look very Asian. I love a small museum. Leonardo? I don't know that he was... Was he Asian? <laughs> I bought you a ticket, Jeff. Thank you, I appreciate that. Exactly. I'll, I'll make sure to get you back for that. Ooh, oh, so I can touch the screens. Yeah, you can touch the screens. Would you like me to direct you to the bathrooms? Yeah, please direct me to the bathrooms. I would love nothing more. Oh, there they are. This is actually good, I'm looking forward to this. I hope that this pen works better than the one that I got at the uh, Resistance Museum, because that one, they gave us the same thing. It didn't work at all. <laughs> no. Wow, we gotta go way down to go to the bathroom. All right, uh, we'll be back after a short break. Did it work? Does the pen work? You think they'd tell? Oh, there it goes. Yes. So I was thinking about this, because Sonucci's not an Asian name. He's born in Milan. So it's an Asian art museum named after it's an, an Italian? An effect. <laughs> it's a business. This is so confusing. Okay, so I guess he just gave. He was one of the directors of the Bank of Paris. was that this is this guy's private collection. So this used to be his house, which was partially open as a museum while he's still alive, I guess. And he shipped 900 crates, you said? 900 crates. 900 crates over from his varied excursions around Asia. There's a whole map of it. From Tokyo down to, like, everywhere. He was a bad guy, too. The hell else do you afford this? Yeah. She's really like on it. She didn't like my joke. This lady doesn't like us very much. I was told I could only film in short snippets, and then someone else told me I couldn't film. We had to get some verification. Anyways, it's it's lovely here. It's very I nice. think she does like us though because she was encouraging us to be. Fair enough. She just wants us to be together. That's all. <laughs> This is nice. This is really chill. It's, it's a lot smaller. It, it was bigger at first than I expected, and then smaller than I expected. But this isn't the budget here. Look at this. This is a hermetic. I mean, it's not hermetic. Hermetically it's sealed, but it is very well sealed in here. But the temperature, there's a temperature control. It does feel very different in here than it did out there. You painted that even that old. How old are they? They're only like 14th century. No, oh, well, look at that. We were talking about how like, there's all this stuff that's from like the 2nd and 3rd century in here. Like, bah. So, it's, it's cool, it's really cool. The sculptures are super cool. Do you want it? Yeah. I was going to say, why are you giving it back? They don't want it. I'm coming. It's not even free. I've walked away with something. Merci. For all they know, we've been sticking this up our noses. Yeah, but you can, you can clean them. 
Oh, I like they want to clean these pens after we've used them. That was really nice. Okay, we need to find lunch then, huh? So apparently we're under no pressure now because I don't have a, a physio appointment. So we have time to get lunch. I do have a two o'clock. You do have a two o'clock. So we do still have a time limit, but it's, it's a little bit less uh, intense than it was a minute ago. This is great. Hope you enjoyed wandering around Europe with us and a little bit of Asia as well. I had a what good are you time. calling this video? Europe in a morning? Yeah, uh, Europe in a day. Can I please send a shout out to whoever made these masks? Uh, yeah, sure, Chris. Oh, that was Dan. I think that was from Dan. This is Dan. Yeah. But I really like, this is very comfortable on the ear, Dan, whoever you are. I appreciate it. Very well done. Thanks to Chris and, and uh, Dan for our delightful masks. I'm telling you, I've got friends. They they love good masks and the, you, you made their days. So uh, unless you've got another place in mind, you want to just go to the Valois and see what they've got going on? Let's see what they've got going on. Let's go to the Valois. Just realized we can't do the Valois because I have eaten there before and I'm trying to eat it somewhere new every time I eat while doing this. She found a Peruvian place just around the corner, which is a godsend because there's not a lot of food around here. Not a lot of our food. Not a lot of our kind of food. There's a lot of 30 euro. That was actually, euro steaks. and like the starters were like 15 euros at that place too. That might've been a, a reason that we're not staying there as well, but we have no shame. Let's go get some Peruvian. I saw they had chips and guac. That's really all I can ask for from life. Here we go. This looks very promising, to be honest. What? Well, that's just a pretty face. Woman of many talents. Just got the ceviche. What kind of ceviche is it? I got the Classico. Which is? Uh, it's white fish ceviche. With, um, it's a more Peruvian ceviche than a Japanese ceviche. Oh, that's good to know. I got the guacamole and I had to try the burrito because I have to know. I have to know. And this thing, cows. That was, what was that called Calso? again? Calso or Calso? It was delicious though, apparently. This could be dangerous. I told her to give it to me spicy, so um, we'll see how spicy, you know. Unless I'm missing something. It's not spicy, but it does taste good. Jess has a, a dinner guest that does not seem to be going anywhere. Oh, wait, oh, oh. Oh, oh. is this the yeah, that was that was close. He that he left he left some goo on your hand. That was good. How did you feel about it? Good. Your ceviche was good. I tried it. It was really good. Outside of the lack of spice, which I probably could have asked for an even spicier sauce, that was tasty. I really liked that. The guacamole was good as well. Recommended there. I want to say thanks to my patron producer of the day today as well, Kristen Camerata. The newest as well because I'm so far behind on the ball that I haven't gotten organized yet. But next week is the week to get organized and I'll be back on top of it. Thanks for jumping into Patreon with me. Appreciate it, Kristen, and to all my patrons for making this possible. And thanks, of course, to Jess for making this an even better day out than it would have otherwise been. Significantly better. It's my absolute pleasure. <laughs> it's what I said. Ah, oh, that's what I heard. Yeah, thanks for watching. This has been just a stroll through the Quartier of Europe. It's really nice to go for a walk and explore a little bit. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for at least one more this week for a wee pause. See you tomorrow.